Welcome to Deep Dive Defense. Over here we give rare insights you won't hear elsewhere. In this video, we will take a look at the reasons behind the failures of Iran's short-range air defense systems in protecting many of its high-value objects. In particular, from being struck by Israel's low-signature drones and cruise missiles, as happened during the 12-day conflict in the summer of 2025. In the later part of the video, we will then analyze Iran's new Azaraksh short-range surface-to-air missile system, which may represent Iran's best solution for countering the threat of low-signature drones and miniature cruise missiles. Like and subscribe if you want to support the channel in the algorithm. Now let's start. Iran possesses numerous short-range air defense systems, some based on anti-aircraft artillery and others on missile. In theory, high-end systems like the Russian Tor M1 are optimized not only to target subsonic cruise missiles or supersonic anti-radiation missiles like the US Harm, but even possess the capability to intercept bombs dropped by aircraft before they can hit the target. While the Tor M1 and Iran's variants of it, the Oghab and Dezful systems, are the topic of a future video, the approach Israel took in general was to reduce the radar signature of its drones and cruise missiles to such a degree that even such high-end systems failed to detect and engage them in time. With a lowered reaction time, a small swarm of several such compact stealth cruise missiles and one-way attack drones can successfully accomplish their mission, even if the short-range surface-to-air missile systems manage to intercept several of them. This is because a system like the Tor M1 is technically restricted to conducting only two engagements simultaneously. A target detected late could therefore mean that by increasing the swarm size to just three, it could be ensured that one of the weapons slipped through and hit its target. One solution for countering such threats is to create a high-end short-range air defense system with a powerful radar and advanced capabilities to engage low-signature targets that approach in relatively high quantities. Such a system is Iran's Zubin air defense system integrated within the Navab surface-to-air missile. But the cost of such solutions is high, and the Zubin is a very new system not yet fielded at any significant scale. While such a system can protect very high-value targets, in the future, a lower-cost solution is necessary for the many lower-priority high-value objects spread across Iran's vast expanses. The range of such a system would only need to be sufficient to protect a specific small area within a 10-kilometer circle that requires object defense. Furthermore, Iran's mountainous terrain necessitates a system that is not restricted by the hills and valleys present throughout the country. A system that could fulfill all these requirements and is sufficiently low cost for widespread deployment could be Iran's Azaraksh short-range surface-to-air missile system, unveiled in 2023. It is a small, low footprint system mounted on a small off-road truck that is very difficult to detect when disguised as a civilian vehicle. And while it may look less impressive than other Iranian air defenses, it possesses a special feature that few of the others have. This is an infrared guided missile system with a man in the loop capability, meaning the missile's up and down data links allow the view from its imaging infrared seeker to be transmitted back to the operator. In practice, this means that once there is any sign of an incoming stealth cruise missile or one way attack drone, the missile can be launched towards that general region. It then gains sufficient altitude to be unaffected by terrain and looks down towards the target area to be manually locked onto the target, subsequently homing in on it autonomously. This capability is more important than it may initially sound. This is because small signature stealth objects often appear and disappear on radar screens or use terrain masking to disappear into a valley, obscuring the line of sight and breaking the lock of systems like the Tor M1 and Pantsir. Therefore, once a human spotter, or the radar system of the Azaraksh launcher itself, or even just its thermal cameras detect a target, it is sufficient to launch the missile and utilize the lock-on after-launch man-in-the-loop capability of the system. Since its interceptor missile is based on the US AIM-9 Sidewinder and is equipped with a low-cost, uncooled imaging infrared seeker, the costs remain low. Furthermore, the missile has the opportunity to approach the target close enough to identify it and confirm its shape, better rejecting flares and homing in on it autonomously, with a higher kill probability. The radio up and down link may appear to be a weak point of the system, but in its role of point defense, the Azaraksh will mainly be deployed deep inside the country, 
and hence remain largely unaffected by any standoff jamming, attempting to break the data link connection and disable the man in the loop function. Therefore, to counter Israel's widely used stealth miniature cruise missiles, like the Icebreaker, Wind Demon and Spice 250, as well as one-way attack drones like the Herop, which together were responsible for most attacks during the 12-day conflict, the widespread deployment of the Azaraksh surface-to-air missile system could be the key solution for this class of threat. Now let us examine the details of the Azaraksh and its missile to understand what advantage this small and perhaps unimpressive looking system holds over comparable ones like the Majid and the Torem one and its Iranian Oghab variant. First revealed in 2023, the Azaraksh is a truck-mounted surface-to-air missile system equipped with radar, an optical tracker, and four AIM-9 Sidewinder pattern short-range missiles. The introduction of the Azaraksh was surprising given that the same manufacturer, the Defense Industries Organization, had previously designed and produced the Majid short-range surface-to-air missile system, which uses a larger diameter rocket motor that can be stored in a sealed tube. Both systems use the same type of imaging infrared seeker, but the Azaraksh has features that distinguish it from the Majid. The uncontainerized rail launched Azaraksh missile in relation boasts larger aerodynamic steering surfaces and the option to be equipped with data link antennas that protrude outside the missile airframe. This is the key difference between the Majid and the Azaraksh missile systems. While the Majid is a lock-on before launch system, requiring the seeker to firmly lock onto the target before launch, the Azaraksh can be launched and fly the first portion of its trajectory guided by the Inertial Measurement Unit IMU, with course corrections via the uplink data connection. The Azaraksh's origins lie with the AIM-9P short-range air-to-air missile of the Iranian Air Force. It is believed that the Air Force's self-sufficiency jihad organization developed the fatter upgrade for existing AIM-9P sidewinders from the late 1980s onward. By the early 1990s, the FATTER project aimed to update the legacy AIM-9Ps to an improved standard, the details of which remain unclear. It is believed that ongoing work led to the FATTER II by the early 2000s, but the full extent of the FATTER program is still unknown. It is believed that the expiring rocket motors of the original US-made AIM-9Ps necessitated the Defense Ministry to establish a refurbishment line to refuel the solid propellant while also upgrading existing stocks to the FATTER II standard. As the need for an air-to-air -air missile to replace the AIM-9 Sidewinder grew in Iran, it is believed that a project began in the early 2010s to develop a missile based on the AIM-9 Sidewinder design that could serve as an air-to-air, surface-to-air, and even air-to-ground missile platform. This development was driven by the production of gimbaled imaging infrared seekers, for missiles and bombs like the Almas and Sadid series. Another crucial enabler was miniaturized avionics, such as an inertial measurement unit and electromechanical actuators. While the aerodynamic layout of the missile remained almost identical to the AIM-9P Sidewinder, the miniaturized electromechanical actuators allowed changes to the aerodynamic steering technique. The original Sidewinder required the rear portion of the missile to be actively stabilized with so-called rollerons. This setup required only two actuators in the forward section of the missile to move two sets of canards. The Azaraksh replaced this concept with four independent actuators that move each of the four canards in the forward section, while the rear stabilizer fins remain completely passive, removing the rollerons. However, this improvement in missile design was not the only enhancement. For the surface-to-air variant of the Azaraksh, the missile was equipped with an uplink and downlink system giving it a man-in-the-loop capability. Adding to that a laser proximity fuse system arranged radially allows the fragmentation warhead to severely affect the target even if the missile misses a direct hit. Since the missiles does not rotate during flight, a directional fragmentation warhead can be utilized. The key difference between the Azaraksh and the Majid is the man-in-the-loop function. The uncooled, rather low-end, low-cost imaging infrared seeker of the missile can be actively supported by ground crew intervention, which can continuously lock it onto the true target, thus avoiding flares and infrared countermeasures. Another advantage of this method is that the missile can be launched against fast-crossing targets, such as terrain-masking cruise missiles, that may disappear behind terrain at some point. 
the man-in-the-loop capability means that the Azaraksh can be launched to high altitudes, with the gimbaled seeker searching and trying to create a lock on the target flying below. The missile then automatically dives onto the target from above. Even if the data link to the missile is lost due to terrain obscuring the radio signals, the imaging infrared seeker will be close enough to the target to robustly lock on with higher resolution, allowing it to avoid countermeasures more effectively. This niche role against very difficult short-range targets is why the Azaraksh system is equipped with a three-dimensional short-range radar, while the Majid system only has its optical volume search system. The Azaraksh low-emission 3D radar system enables faster detection of targets across a larger portion of scanned airspace, even in adverse weather conditions. The system's rapid reaction time is a crucial feature, unlike the Russian Pantsir S-1 system, which specializes in intercepting high-velocity supersonic targets, the Azaraksh excels in targeting high subsonic speed threats that utilize terrain masking techniques to evade short-range air defense systems. A notable strength of the Azaraksh is its robustness, particularly its man-in-the-loop mode, which allows for late-stage high-resolution locking of the seeker. This capability is essential against systems with advanced countermeasures and low-signature objects such as drones with minimal infrared emissions. The man-in-the-loop function permits successful engagements at longer distances, which would be challenging for systems like the Mujid that require a firm lock before being launched. Additionally, the relatively large control surfaces of the Azaraksh missile enhance its maneuverability, enabling energy-efficient pop-up and dive maneuvers. The range of the Azaraksh system is approximately 8 kilometers, though this likely decreases to around 5 kilometers when engaging high subsonic crossing targets like land attack cruise missiles. This range is suitable for its low cost radar system and small aperture size. The system is mounted on an off road capable four wheel drive truck. It also features a thermal imaging camera that allows for target identification, an essential capability in countering electronic warfare and tracking low radar cross section targets. In operational scenarios, it is believed that the Azaraksh would be complemented by several Majid systems to handle less demanding targets. The Azaraksh radar system would efficiently acquire, prioritize, and distribute targets for the Majid systems. The low emission radar of the Azaraksh reduces the system's signature and footprint. Moreover, the Azaraksh missile employs a new smokeless solid propellant rocket motor significantly reducing the launch signature of the already comparatively passive engagement system. Although not yet in operational service, the threat of terrain masking subsonic long-range standoff weapons highlights the Azaraksh's niche role in protecting high-value assets in a point defense, object protection role. The system's low-cost design makes it effective against drones that might be difficult to hit with other systems lacking the man-in-the-loop feature linked to an infrared imaging seeker. While a missile uplink and downlink dependent system might seem fragile in face of electronic warfare, the Azaraksh is intended for use deep within Iran to safeguard high-value objects, where the intensity of electronic warfare is expected to be relatively low. It is anticipated that Iran's Air Defense Force or the Army Ground Forces will supplement existing units equipped with Majid systems with the Azaraksh, providing a critical niche capability within the overall air defense structure. The low peak power radar of the Azaraksh system is likely highly reliable and capable of prolonged operation. This reliability enables the system, along with accompanying Majid, to protect an area even if the connection to the upper echelon integrated air defense system is lost. While the Majid system of the army has its own battery level Shahid Jalalvand radar, the air defense force may opt for the Azaraksh system for that role. The emergency operation capability it provides is vital for continuously protecting high-value targets, improving system redundancy. Consequently, the system can provide continuous radar coverage and identify detected targets using its infrared thermal imaging cameras. All these features and its specific role make the Azaraksh an attractive system for widespread acquisition by the Air Defense Force and other services. So that's all for today. If you liked it, give a thumbs up comment, and subscribe. It really makes a difference in the YouTube algorithm and is a great support to the channel. The real enthusiast can become members and given access to exciting membership area material. Thanks for your support and motivation. See you next time.